Man, I feel like such a wimp shielding myself from the rain and uh, shooting out here in the park, you know, with my camera after playing many, many hours of a game where the protagonist has to go through sheer living hell. I've been playing Ghost Recon Breakpoint and I've been playing a character named Nomad. My call sign's Nomad who truly is a nomad. I've been playing solo in this game, but you can play cooperatively and you can play PVP, and I haven't done any of that. I've really just played a little bit with Blake, but for the most part, I've been playing on my own and I've been out in this harsh wilderness, this fictional wilderness where it's raining sometimes and it's windy all the time and everybody wants to kill me. It's incredibly dangerous. It's a world populated by technology. There is this evil, I'm gonna put evil in quotations, genius who has crafted all kinds of cool technology across this island wilderness that you're in. So you see a lot of electric vehicles and these sort of high-tech kind of encampments, lots of drones flying everywhere. And they've been usurped as we all know because everybody knows that John Bernthal is in this game. He came out famously at E3. He's such an awesome actor. Honestly, he's terrific in this game. He's really fun to watch. He's fun to watch him whatever the hell he does. Us. You know, he's amazing. I've had enough. He is very menacing, and he's surrounded by a bunch of other mercenaries and goons for hire that you have to kill as Nomad. And slowly but surely, you start to realize that this island has some people that you can rely on. The island is called Aroa, and there are some homesteaders in there that are hiding in caves and stuff. So you start to kind of understand that there are different factions and different kinds of people that you can assist, and some will give you intel. And you have a mission board, which is a lot like detective movies that we've seen with strings and everything, and with all kinds of intel that you got to go and collect. You're finding intel at computers, you're finding intel from people that you meet in the right place, magazines and pamphlets that you'll pick up. So there's a bit of a mystery here that you have to solve, but you know the drill. This is another massive open world experience akin to what we played in Wildlands, but it's different this time if you play it solo because you're alone. And so it felt a lot more, as I was playing it, like, you know, Metal Gear Solid V in some ways. Definitely got some connections to Breath of the Wild, where you're just playing as Link and you've got this vast, enormous wilderness to explore. There's a lot of that, although not as tuned and not as awe-inspiring and beautific and well-crafted. It's also got echoes of stuff that we've seen in Red Dead Redemption. I think that the storytelling has definitely been cranked up quite a bit by the UB team in Paris that worked on this game. Cut sequences, if you're gonna hire an actor like John Bernthal, you know, you gotta make everybody look a lot better in the game. So the cut sequences are better, they're more impactful, they're more fun to just sit back and watch. I found the hoorah attitude of Wildlands, you know, a little off-putting and it's just so generic and just, I don't know, I tuned out after a while. You fucking worm. I haven't tuned out of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but I've only put in about 15 hours into this game. I've leveled up quite a bit, but I've also leveled up in my equipment, and that's the other sort of connection to Breath of the Wild. You're constantly, or Diablo, or Destiny, or The Division, feels a lot like The Division. You're constantly changing out your loadout. So you're finding new pants, you're finding new gloves. You could almost, you know, subtitle this game Drones and Knee Pads, which I, actually I think Ubisoft has a fascination with drones and knee pads. They're a lot of their games. That is honestly an element here that is a bit disappointing is that this feels very familiar. It feels like Wildlands and it feels like The Division and it feels like the open-endedness of Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed but I still had a good time and I think it's this focus on this solitary experience for me that's made it more enjoyable. I've had some frustration definitely hasn't been playing. There's definitely moments where you're dropped a million miles away from your objective. I've also been stuck on an objective, which is really forcing me to lean into the idea of bringing in other people to help me get past this. I've got to stop this convoy and get this sergeant and interview him. And I've got them. I've got two of them. But just as I do, it's always around a damn base. So, you know, the drones catch me and then there's all kinds of uh, reinforcements that come after me, which is exhilarating, but also frustrating when you just want to progress past it. So I feel like I'm going to have have to ask somebody to come in or a couple people to come in and help me defeat that which isn't a bad thing and I honestly want to keep playing the game which is a good thing I am enjoying my way through there is a little rinse and repeat and you know even though I got stuck on that one mission I was able to go off on other missions where I'm basically you know interrogating other people to find other targets all right asshole I'm gonna ask this once and only once Where's Walker? They're leading me to different people on the board and I'm taking them out. It has a great tactility. You know, I like the movements. I like the animations. It's satisfying. The enemies fall quickly, which is good because 
you know, there are tougher ones as well, and there are certainly areas that you don't want to enter into because you're not, you know, equipped or you're not rated high enough so you can go into those areas, which is great, and the warning signs come up. The drones are frightening as hell because you don't, sometimes they just sort of erupt to life if you come too close. <laughs> I do like the stealthiness of the game. I like being able to go into prone mode and get my sniper rifle out, but also to camouflage myself as drones are coming over. I feel like, you know, they made the last game in Bolivia and there was a lot of work and effort to kind of craft a world that felt very real and authentic. And they did a great job with the environments. But I think the remove from reality here and sort of the juxtaposition of the future elements and then every once in a while you find some cool ruins and things like that that you're passing through. There is a lot of interesting world building in this title. I think by freeing themselves up from trying to place it and localize it to a place that really exists, gave the developers a little bit more room to imagine and to explore. I also dig this mixture of technology in this natural world. I think it's pretty cool, including the tech that you have. I mean, you've got sensor bombs that you can shoot into the area and it'll pulse and you can see where everybody is. You've got a drone that will help you out. You play alone this time. You don't play with AI buddies like you did in Wildlands. So you've got these drones that you can shoot up and they will do the sync shot, which is kind of a a standard deal with Ghost Recon games. You also have an assortment of weaponry, submachine guns and light machine guns, assault rifles, shotguns, uh, handguns. I really defaulted to putting scopes on because the world is so big and standing back and being as dangerous and effective with a sniper rifle as I could. I also put suppressors on everything and I painted up the guns in the gunsmith mode. You know, I tracked on this very realistic feeling tactical map that was confusing as hell because of course it's loaded with, you know, all kinds of places to discuss all of these little objective markers but then I started to understand that you really you need to unlock the bivouacs which are you can see them across the landscape they have little smoke clouds coming up you've got to unlock all of those so you can fast travel quite a bit and you also want to try to keep the vehicles handy and the choppers are definitely much appreciated in this game because there is such a massive world to explore and it is a drag when you have to hoof it and it's a drag when you've got you know a mountain that you just feels like oh my god which way do I go if I go that way I'm gonna be climbing forever I go that way I'm gonna be falling or if I go that so it feels a bit of a drag that you're like oh my god and then you, I have gotten stuck in the geometry and I've had to reload at a previous like fast travel to another bivouac you know it's not perfect but I have been having a good time playing this game you're done you have wasted too much of my fucking time as it is it's fun. I've been having a good time. It's not a perfect experience, but I have been having a good time, and I will keep playing this. I'll have a further kind of thought on this, especially after I've played some online, because I feel like the game is really asking... You can play it totally alone, but it's. I think it's really asking you in a, you know, a fair way to play with your pals. You know, that's what all the marketing is all about. So I think I need to experience that. And the one thing I will say as well, there is a store in here. There are microtransactions. There are ways that you can kind of spend to speed up some of the stuff in here and some of the unlocks, which is a total pain in the ass. It didn't have to go down that way. I haven't felt the pull to do any of that. I've just avoided it. It's a drag. It's a reality in modern game making. I think with all of the subscription stuff that's coming, though, we're probably going to start to see a lot of that phase out. I dig this game, though. I've been having fun. From what I've played so far, I'm going to give Breakpoint a 7.5 out of 10.